Okay, I want to do a small tech talk. It's a bit about the wind range of a kite. Um, it's an interesting topic because uh, especially the Germans would like to have a very accurate wind range of every kite and then comparing the old kite with the new kite. To be honest, it's more a marketing thing. Uh, if, for example, the kite uh, starts at, let's say, six knots instead of seven knots. As people say on one side, oh, but that's not a massive difference. But if you compare it from seven knots to six knots, this is a difference from uh, more than 10%, about 15% uh, gain, which is massive. Um, on the other side, if, you're, um, if a kite is starting at half of the wind speed, you need four times more power or four times bigger kite to make this possible, so the, the difference is even more big. So it doesn't make sense from this point of view. Also, they have this uh, wind range, uh, like uh, six or seven knots, then you have to do a uh, reservoir device with digit number to make it even more accurate. But even this is um, not really um, fixing the problem. Because, for example, the low wind range is mainly depending on the skills of the kite surfer. If you have the same skills, if you change from a different kite, like a Sonic uh, 2 to a Sonic 3, you can gain a bit of um, wind range. There are different reasons for it. For example, uh, the back stall of a Sonic 3 is less than a Sonic 2. So if you sheet in and move the kite, it's more easy to get the power out of it. If you have the skills that you know where the backstall is, that you sheet out slightly before it starts to backstall, if you have a very good feeling, then you can get a lot closer with the wind range and the lower wind range. So for example, it depends a lot on the skill. For sure, it also depends if you have a hydrofoil, or if you're using a twin tip or a bigger board or whatever. And for sure, also your weight and everything. So it's also a bit difficult uh, to calculate. Um, yeah, about also the power, for example, um, if you're looping the kite in the power zone, uh, the lift to drag ratio is very important because, for example, look for, your, for a viral, it's built that it's not building up too much power if you fly it through the power zone, even when you sheet in, because otherwise students would um, fly away, which is not uh, really funny. So, and the Sonic here on the other side has a very high lift to drag ratio, uh, only the Sonic BMG has a bit more. So, uh, if you fly it through the power zone, it's accelerating. Pulling like hell. I mean, this is also great if you're using a hydrofoil, if you're uh, kiting on uh, ice, for example, you get a massive pull, you get going on the hydrofoil, and you're gone. For sure, you need the skills again to be able to loop it in the power zone and in this short time while it, this power peak is coming to get on the hydrofoil and get going. But if you know how you do it, you can use a very small kite. So, I personally, for example, love to ride with the Sonic 3 in uh, nine square meters and use it most of the time with a big hydrofoil then uh, the power at the wind edge of the wind window is not important it's mainly important how much power you can gain in the power zone to get going next point for example is line lengths if you have longer lines you get more wind up in the air but this also depends if the wind speed is increasing in the upper levels in germany sometimes this happens uh, if you've got um, wind from the east side and the ocean is quite cold so upper levels uh, have more wind speed then uh, you, you feel it when you fly the kite up you can jump a lot higher get more hang time and sometimes the wind speed on the ground is the same like upper levels for example I ride a lot of times on the lakes and there the wind speed lower is even less than higher up because uh, the lake is somewhere between the trees very far down so there's not too much wind on the ground but still I like to ride short lines why the wind range gets smaller for sure but you also gain a um, more direct feeling of the kite if the for example the wind direction is changing or let's say 10 degrees if you have long lines it takes a long time until the kite flies to the new position of the power zone if you have short lines it's very fast and very direct so for example at longer lines the top end of the wind range it's also less especially if the wind direction is changing because you get a lot of power spikes on top until it runs off the, to the edge of the wind window so um, it's easier with shorter lines to have more high wind but theoretically if you have no gusts nothing constant wind even with longer lines it's quite similar already not too much difference so it also the wind range depends a long, lot on the, on the line lengths so this is also a bit difficult maybe the top end of the wind range it's also an issue um, Normally, let's, let's say with inflatables, if you sheet out an inflatable, it starts flapping directly. So the D-Power is very direct. Uh, they have the same with the peak single skin uh, foil kite from us. 
So if you sheet out, you add instant depower. Makes it very easy, especially on gusty wind, especially if you use longer lines, for example, then it's more direct, a lot more easy. Uh, with the foil kite, especially the Sonic uh, range and Sonic 3 also, if you sheet out, you open the brakes, the kite has less drag, it starts to accelerate, it first it pulls you more. Even that you depower, you have more power for a short time because it accelerates. Then it runs to the edge of the wind window where it has less pull, especially less, with, less pulling downwind. This makes uh, you riding upwind in even the strongest wind and the wind range is it's really massive if you know how to handle it. But this needs skills for example. So the Byron on the other side also, when you depower it's also quite direct. That's the reason why the leading edge is bumping in, like inflatables they are flapping or the peak are flapping. So this kite is bumping it in the leading edge. So to get rid of the lift, to get uh, more depower, more direct depower makes it more easy. And this kind here on the other side uh, is yeah for high tech people who know how to use the depower. It's not only a depower, it's let the kite accelerate, it shoots up, it's good for jumping, it's good for running upwind, it's good for performance. So this is also you know, very different. So you have to be aware that if you just take a wind range, this wind range is less than this range or whatever. It's not uh, everything about the story. For a beginner, this range where you can use it, if it's bigger, then we would use the Sonic because uh, it would be too scary. He has to use it very light wind. Otherwise, yeah, he get too much power, he could get scared. So the wind range really depends a lot on the rider, on the conditions, on line lengths, how gussy it is. Um, and the kind of type you're using. So it's not easy to just say, okay, this kind has more wind range or this kind has less wind range. And also now we are uh, skipping a bit to have uh, more um, uh, pessimistic wind ranges on the web page that people uh, who are not used too much to kite surfing, they usually read the wind ranges and they don't get into trouble if it's telling them don't take an 18 square meter Sonic 3 in more than 60 nuts, for example, for the beginning. If you're skilled riders, you can use a lot more, but if you don't have the skills, don't do it in the beginning. And yeah, for example, if you have a Sonic 2 already, if you skip uh, changing to Sonic 3, the wind range is very similar. You just get a bit more at the low end, especially because it's a bit more easy to get it out because there's less backstall. And the high end depends a bit how you're riding average kiter maybe at the beginning don't have more if you're good riders you can ride well overpowered you prefer that it's more at the edge of the wind window so you maybe can keep it a bit longer but that really depends again on the rider how big the wind range is and if it's one or two knots more or less uh, it doesn't make sense to really write this on the home page so yeah so I hope I could give you a bit of impression why it's not that easy just uh, give uh, data how big the wind range is Maybe I just can tell you the Sonic 3, it has a better lift to drag ratio. So it goes better upwind, it sits when you go upwind, if you sheet out, it gives more to the edge of the wind window. Almost already like a VMG, a little bit less, and but a lot more already in the sole. And, but if you sheet in, for example, it's less prone to backstall. So it's a lot easier especially to go downwind. So the wind window can become more narrow when you want to go downward when you sheet in. It's for it's on top a lot easier to do this than it was on the Sonic 2. And yeah, and the Soul is our product, which is the best kite. If you don't know exactly what you want to buy, I always recommend if you like a foil kite, go for the Soul. A Soul is a lot more easy, and it's uh, Soul is uh, great if you're coming from inflatables because die power D power feels a bit more direct. As it also has a bit this uh, bump at the leading edge that it's like inflatable that is uh, flapping the top sail at the end so it feels more direct and the steering is a bit more like you're used to an inflatable and the Thonic is specially made for foil enthusiasts who have been flying foils for years already or if you're riding the sole now for a longer time and you say wow this is great but I want to do the next step I want to have even more I want to more more of this foil feeling you know and then you should go for it then it's great but if you don't know exactly what you, sh what you want to buy or if you're not kiting too much, if you have difficult conditions, uh, like at my lake where I ride at home a lot of times, uh, yeah, I really recommend going for the sole. It's the best overall kite, but if you want to have more hang time, uh, more performance, uh, really it's like a trick kite. You can propeller this kite. If you 
putting one steering line too much, it propellers like hell. It's great if you want, uh, if you go even go for wave riding, you can just oversheet it, rotate it 180 degrees, sheet out, and it's accelerating to the other side. For sure, if you're uh, not used to it, uh, you prefer a lot of sole, which is turning nicely like you used uh, at inflatables, how it's turning around the wingtip and without the backstalling propeller ring, so it's more easy. So, this is a bit more technical, but if you like to have a more technical kite, which uh, gives you more performance, and the Sonic 3, otherwise, a sole, or yeah, even for beginners, we are selling more and more to the schools because they first want to have a trainer kite, um, a foil kite, um, but he was developing it that you already have the deep hole that you feel if you deep hole what happens that you get less steering when you sheet out if you sheet in too much it's kind of backstalling and this kite also if you pull one line it relaunch with just one line like the sole is also doing by the way also the sonic 3 is also quite good already if you just only pull one line that it gets up but for sure it eats uh, water faster than the sole or the byron it's almost impossible that it eats water they all have a draining system so it gets out again. If you know what you're doing, it's no problem. Someone can fill up water and you can get it out. But you need a bit of uh, experience for this because usually it doesn't happen. So um, usually you don't get ex too experienced about it. So yeah, I hope uh, I could help you explain a bit uh, the information about the wind range and everything. So maybe it helps you a bit uh, for the understanding and whatever kite you have, uh, go on the water. Don't go in too high wind at the beginning start playing with it especially with the foil kites you can use it great on land you can learn the relaunch uh, the only thing I don't recommend if you pull one line on the ground if it's um, stoned at the ground uh, the leading edge will uh, slide over the ground which is not too good especially at the Sonic 3 because we made it for performance so the rigid falls at the leading edge we have here at the leading edge uh, this beginner kites more that's not directly at the leading edge so it's less a problem but with a race and big air kites this uh, rigid foil here it goes directly to the nose here even so if you smack it over the ground uh, I would not do it uh, too much uh, with other kites we had not a single case so far but it's just good for you to know uh, what you should do, not do but I think it's the same with inflatables it's even more a problem if you relaunch it with one line and dragging it over the ground it, it's not too good. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it and give you some background info about general kites, especially our four kites, why it's a bit different with the power and uh, how you can handle it. Okay, see you. Bye.